170U, Psychological Foundations and Digital Technologies, Module 9, Video Flip 9.2, Focus on Facebook Psychology. In this module, we'll examine some recent literature on Facebook and how it has affected our lives psychologically and the overall human condition. Here are the guiding questions for this video. Brainstorm some of the advantages and disadvantages of using Facebook for adult learners. What are the implications of using Facebook on areas like relationship formation or identity construction? What impact does Facebook have on psychological and emotional well-being? And what are some of the issues related to privacy, personal and professional boundaries, and learning? Facebook as a tool was launched in February 2004 as a tool to help Harvard University students communicate online. In September 2006, the site was made publicly available to any person over the age of 13 with an email address. In the ensuing years, Facebook membership has grown above 500 million users globally. The main value of Facebook as it is currently used is to enable users to connect with people from both their past and their present and maintain contact with an online social network. To date, it has not replaced face-to-face -face or telephone activity, but part of its success may be due to its primary use as a cheap, casual social media communication tool that's easy to use without committing to more formal, traditional ways of communicating. It can also enhance our face-to-face -face interaction by using events functions and organizing people through online forums to eventually get together face-to-face. -to -face. The use of the internet for mediating a community's activities generally takes one of two models. The consumption model involves searching for and retrieving information that's made available for a market price. So in this model, users rarely talk or engage with one another, but do engage with the product. So privacy, anonymity, reliability, speed, and visual appeal are all desired features of this model. The second model is the community model. By contrast, it represents a relatively stable, longer-term online group. And these are largely non-economic, more playful uses of the technology, what Kalman refers to as ludic uses of technology. It's the tension between these two models, consumption and community, that makes social software interesting. Can you think of an example of how these models might connect? How about buying an online gift or playing a virtual game? Let's do a quick PMI. Think of a plus, a minus, and I wonder if about Facebook use, and we'll share these in tutorial this week. Next we'll take a look at some of the psychological factors involved in Facebook usage. Recently Anderson and colleagues have initiated some of the research on the psychological processes that affect behavior within the context of Facebook. Use of online communication seems to represent a move to a more isolated, individually driven mode of human interaction in our Western culture. Is Facebook just for young people? Well, it appears there's little difference between the personality profiles of the online and offline populations. Game research often shows that those with strong leadership in the real world may tend to sit back in online situations, and the opposite can be true as well. People who are shy and introspective in real world situations can take on opposite personality traits when in a socially safe online game situation. So many more older adults are operating in Facebook. Is Facebook more popular among very sociable people? Well, there are four main factors that predict who uses Facebook, and these are internet self-efficacy, a need for cognition or information, the need to belong, and collective esteem. So people with a curious mind tend to be drawn to the site's role as a search vehicle. Why do people use or stop using it? Research shows us that people actively engage with media channels for diversion, personal relationship, personal identity, and information. More recently, we see that people use social networking sites as a way to build and maintain relationships in virtual communities. Bonds, Rack, and Racky also found that the three core dimensions of use are information, friendship, and communication. So why do companies use Facebook? Well, businesses can help potential customers to engage with certain brands and to do market research by using the like function of Facebook. And using marketing tools, social networking has become a huge part of successful business practice. How is identity construction important in social networking? 
Facebook users can personalize their profile page, so users have some control over their identity, but they do give cues based on what activities they're involved in. So users of Facebook are more likely than other virtual worlds to have a personality profile that is fairly similar to their real personality, if exaggerated just a bit. What about privacy? It seems that in general, women are more concerned than men about Facebook privacy. Disclosure of information is generally predicted by the user's need for popularity and level of self-esteem. So people with low self-esteem see information sharing as a way to gain acceptance by the group, whereas people with higher self-esteem are only concerned with the opinions of those in their chosen group. Does Facebook isolate us or make the already socially adept more social? The issue here is whether online communication erodes intimacy. There is a fundamental human need for face-to-face -face and physical contact, which is lacking in internet-based relationships. Many people believe that a social networking system such as Facebook complements but cannot replace the social interaction, so this balance between intimacy and social capital is key. And finally, what about time spent online? While it seems that women tend to spend more time online than men, there is some evidence to show that the socially rich do get richer. Extroversion as a personality trait is positively correlated to the size of one's network. There are two types of social capital identified by Anderson and her colleagues, and she refers to these as bridging versus bonding. Bridging results from intergroup networks being developed. This would be similar to you taking this class and then connecting with your classmates outside of it using Twitter, Facebook, or other digital tools. This is generally a weaker type of connection that might be used for leads in employment or academic support and is less used for deep emotional support. Bonding social capital refers to strengthening within the online community and it's usually used for deeper emotional connections to people you may have already known in the virtual place. What are the benefits and risks? Marina writes that social networking sites prevent, present both benefits and risks to the user. Can you think of some of the benefits to your use, your children's use, your workplace or business use? What are some of the disadvantages? Here's a few things you might want to consider. Privacy, legal issues, isolation versus self-esteem building, cyberbullying or stalking online, misinformation, employment screening, sometimes can create real-world problems that didn't exist before in face-to-face -face relationships, or over-reliance on Facebook, business marketing, education, and global connections. What are some of the future considerations? There may be a use for this type of social networking in healthcare as a way to understand behavior. Online communities such as Facebook may help physicians to prevent or predict high-risk behaviors of individuals in those groups who are stating online that they are willing to do high-risk behaviors. It can also enhance community support for users and takes the pressure off a healthcare system that traditionally has put all the control in the hands of doctors. Shared wisdom or knowledge may be one way that we can navigate the masses of information coming our way by using these social online network systems. We can seek out our own experts in the field. For example, when was the last time you searched for information about a household issue, a parenting issue, or some item you're going to purchase without doing a bit of research online? Some other considerations for the future of Facebook include how psychologically healthy or unhealthy personality traits tend to be exaggerated online. The profile of online communities closely reflects the profile of offline users as well. So we need to consider how the criminal or darker side of human nature might appear. Cyberbullying and harassment are examples of things we might not do face to face, but people feel empowered and invisible when using the technology. And finally, we also need to consider how fast the online world evolves. One would have to look longitudinally over time to see what the real impact of Facebook is. The basic principles of social software are speed and universality, so the potential for distributing propaganda is immense. Here are the synthesis questions for this video. What further questions or issues arise for you when you think about how Facebook or other social networking sites affect the psychology of human endeavors? Given the speed of evolving digital affordances, predict how Facebook will be impacting the world five years from now. And finally, choose one relationship that you're currently in, either work or personal, and be prepared to discuss how social networking online has had an impact on the quality of this relationship, either positive or negative. 
I look forward to chatting with you in tutorial.